Good evening, good evening. This is Lynette and this is the 21st Century Watchman's Channel. And it's about time, which is a one-year chronological Bible study. We go through the books of the Bible in time order. We're in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Actually, Matthew 26, Mark 14, Luke 22, and John 13, respectively. Let's get started, shall we? When Jesus had finished all these sayings, he said to his disciples, You know that after two days the Passover is coming, and the Son of Man will be delivered up to be crucified. Then the chief priests and the elders of the people gathered in the palace of the high priest, whose name was Caiaphas, and plotted together in order to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. But they said, Not during the feast, lest there be an uproar among the people. They didn't want any problems with the people. They were trying to to keep the crowd down because they knew the crowd was with Jesus. Now, when Jesus was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came up to him with an alabaster flask of very expensive ointment, and she poured it on his head as he reclined at table. And when the disciples saw it, they were indignant, saying, Why this waste? For this could have been sold for a large sum and given to the poor. Since they were all about giving to the poor, they wanted to know what was, what was up with this waste. But Jesus, aware of this, said to them, Why do you trouble the woman? For she has done a beautiful thing to me. For you always have the poor with you, but you will not always have me. True that, true that. In pouring this ointment on my body, she has done it to prepare me for burial. Truly I say to you, wherever this gospel is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. Now, in Jesus' day, I got, you know, and this came from funeralbasics.org, believe it or not. In Jesus' day, the body was washed and anointed with expensive perfumes like nard, myrrh, and aloes. Then the body was wrapped in a shroud, the face covered with a special cloth, and the hands and feet tied with strips of cloth. So her doing, anointing his body with perfumes, like she was doing, that was, he felt like it was in preparation for his burial. She was doing this. Then one of the 12, whose name was Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priest because he was probably upset about it. He was the one that was keeping the money, by the way. And so he went to the chief priest and said, what will you give me if I deliver him over to you? And they paid him 30 pieces of silver. And from that moment, he sought an opportunity to betray him. Wow. You just never know. When they think that you're getting too much shine, people will turn you over, right? They do not play about you not having that shine. And Jesus was getting a lot of shine. Now, on the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus saying, Where will you have us prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and say to him, The teacher says my time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. And the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he reclined at table with the twelve. And as they were eating, he said, Truly I say to you, one of you will betray me. And they were very sorrowful and began to say to him one after another, Is it I, Lord? He answered, He who has dipped his hand in the dish with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes and it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that man if he had not been born. Judas, who would betray him, answered, Is it I, Rabbi? He said to him, You have said so. Jesus was so straight up. He didn't lie to anybody. He didn't dodge any issues. You ask him straight up. It, now Judas already knew it was him. Well, he thought that, that Jesus didn't know. But this man's been healing the sick and raising the dead in your face. And you think that telling you the truth was going to be a hard thing for him? He's been confronting Pharisees and Sadducees and, you know, whoever else want to see. He's been doing all of this all this time or think they can see. And you think he wasn't going to tell you the truth, Judas? Come on, bro. Now, as they were eating, Jesus took bread and after blessing it, broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. And he took a cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. 
I tell you, I will not drink again of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my father's kingdom. So there's going to be another communion, but that's not going to be happening right now. This is Jesus' last supper, real talk. And when they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. They went, they went out singing. Then Jesus said to them, you will all fall away because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. They're going to run because they don't want to be associated with him. If, you know, because they, once they come for one, they always come for the rest of the people. You know how it goes. But after I'm raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter answered him, though they fall away because of you, I will never fall away. Jesus said to him, truly, I tell you this very night before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, even if I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all the disciples said the same. How quickly they forget. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. And taking with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, my soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch with me. Jesus was getting depressed. He was getting worried. This was He was still human. This was, what? Am I doing this? And going a little farther, he fell on his face and prayed, saying, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Wow. We have to be at that point in our lives. Well, we're saying, if it be possible, because we know that it's not going to be good for us not being left here. If this was Jesus' cup, we're going to have to, we're drinking from the same cup. We are a royal priesthood. They're not going to like us either. We expect all these people to like us and we get frazzled when they don't. If we're standing up for Jesus, then we're going to have problems. Basically, is what he, you know, is what he said before. And that's just what, and we're seeing what that his cup exemplifies in this passage. And he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, so could you not watch with me one hour? Couldn't y'all just stay up? Watch and pray. You see how they're sleeping? Couldn't you just watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, for the second time, he went away and prayed, my father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. He's still, he's still asking. Now, if, we can't, if you can't do it no other way, then I'm in, but, no, but I really don't want this. And again, he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words again. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, sleep and take your rest later on. See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be, get, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Straight up. My betrayer is here. Let me get over here and handle that. While he was still speaking, Judas came, one of the twelve, and with him a great crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man who sees him. And he came up to Jesus at once and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and he kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you came to do. Then they came up and laid hands on Jesus and seized him. And behold, one of those who were with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. As I always want. Then Jesus said to him, put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Don't be doing that. Calm down. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my father and he will at once send me more than 12 legions of angels? But how then should the scriptures be fulfilled that it must be so? So if, if you do this, and if I call my father, call, call call my father to get these angels going, the scripture's not going to be fulfilled. You won't be saved. It will all be for naught. At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to capture me? Day after day, I sat in the temple teaching and you did not seize me. But all this has taken place that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples left him and fled. They ran. They ran. Don't expect the people that's with you to be rolling with you at the end. They ran. 
and they ran. This man had so much power, but they saw the centurions coming to get him, the, the Roman soldiers coming to get him, and they ran. They might run from you too. Well, don't get caught up in what you see and what the crowd's looking like. They might run. Then those who had seized him led him to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders had gathered, and Peter was followed in him at a distance as far as the courtyard of the high priest, and going inside, he sat with the guards to see the end. Now the chief priests and the whole council were seeking false testimony against Jesus that they might put in a death. They were seeking false testimony. They, they already knew the truth on him, but I need some lies in order to convict this boy. Now, so don't expect them to tell the truth on you. Don't get resentful and upset because they, they're going to lie. But they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. At last, two came forward and said, This man said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to rebuild it in three days. And the high priest stood up and said, Have you no answer to make? What is it that these men testify against you? But Jesus remained silent. And the high priest said to him, I adjure you by the living God. Tell us if you are the Christ, the Son of God, the Messiah, basically, the Christ. His name wasn't Jesus Christ, as in it was Jesus the Christ, as in or Jesus the Messiah. Christ was a title. Christ wasn't his name. Throwing that out there. Jesus said to him, you have said so, but I tell you, from now on, you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his robes and said, He has uttered blasphemy. What further witnesses do we need? You have now heard his blasphemy. What is your judgment? They answered, He deserves death. Then they spit in his face and struck him. And some slapped him, saying, Prophecy, or excuse me, prophesy to us, you Christ. Who is it that struck you? Wow, cold blooded, right? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard, and a servant girl came up to him and said, You also with Jesus the Galilean. And he denied it before them all, saying, I do not know what you mean. And when he went out to the entrance, another servant girl saw him, and she said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. And again he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and, and said to Peter, Certainly you, you too are one of them. Your accent betrays you. Then he began to invoke a curse on himself and to swear, I do not know the man. He was cussing and saying he didn't know him. He didn't want no parts of it. So he had to be emphatic about his um, his distance from Jesus and his not, his, you know, he had to unknow him. And immediately the rooster crowed and Peter remembered the saying to Jesus, the saying of Jesus before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. He didn't want to be this. This is not what he wanted, but he was scared. And he committed just exactly what the, what the Savior said. It was, yeah, this is, this, is, this is another synoptic gospel. That means that they're telling the same story in their, in their own way. But a lot of it's going to be the same because it's the same story. So here we go again. It was now two days before the Passover in the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And the chief priests and the and the um, scribes were seeking how to arrest him by stealth and kill him. For they said, not during the feast, lest there be an uproar from the people. And while he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he was reclining at table, a woman came with an alabaster flask of ointment, a pure nard, very costly, and she broke the flask and poured it over his head. There were some who said to themselves indignantly, why was the ointment wasted like that? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii and given to the poor. See, Mark is more specific. And they scolded her, but Jesus said, leave her alone. Why do you trouble her? For she, she has done a beautiful thing to me. For you always have the poor with you, and whenever you want, you can do good for them. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for burial. And truly I say to you, wherever the gospel is proclaimed in the world, what she has done will be told of in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray him to, to them. 
And when they heard it, they were glad and promised to give him money. And he sought an opportunity to betray, um, to betray him. He was looking for an opportunity. Let me let me get an in and see how it, you know, where I can do this. Thing. And on the first day of unleavened bread, when they sacrificed the, the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, "Where will you have us go and prepare for you to eat the Passover?" And he sent two of his disciples and said to them, "Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the master of the house." The teacher says, where is my guest room? Wherever, I'm sorry, where I might or may eat the Passover with my disciples. The teacher here, that this man's going to know who the teacher is. And he will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. They prepared for us. They're prepared for us. There we go. And the disciples set out and went to the city and found it just as he had told them. And they prepared the Passover. And when it was evening, he came with the twelve. And as they were reclining at table and eating, Jesus said, truly I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be sorrowful and say to him one after the another, Is it I? He said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the dish with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe to the man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that man if he had not been born. I know this must be going through Jesus' head. This is not what he wanted. He didn't want this, le this level of uh, pressure. It's pressure. And as they were eating, he took bread and after blessing it, he broke it and gave it to them and said, take this, take, this is my body. And he took a cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and they all drank of it. They all drank of that same cup. And he said to them, this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly, I say to you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. He's waiting. He's waiting to have that, that supper with us, that drink, the eating of the bread. He's, he's ready to partake in the communion with us. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. So they went from praising them to go in to pray. And Jesus said to them, you will fall, all fall away, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. Nobody want to hear that. Did nobody want to hear that? But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, even though they all fall away, I will not. And Jesus said to him, truly, I tell you this very night, for the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he said emphatically, if I, must, if I must die with you, I will not deny you. And they all said the same. So he said, even though they might fall away, I'm not going to do it. This is what Peter's saying. He was the first to fall, wasn't he? And they went to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. And he stood with him, um, Peter and James and John. And he took with him, Peter and James and John, and began to be greatly distressed and troubled. And he said to them, my soul is very sorrowful, even to death, remain here and watch. He told them he was depressed. And going a little farther, he fell on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. Are we there? What? Not what I will, but what he wills? That's This is a big thing to say. This is so Jesus. He always did big things and said big things. Are we ready for bigger things? We always want our territory expanded, but are we ready to, to do the bigger thing and, and, and tell him what his will is and how where it places in our lives? Still going. And he came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not watch one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were he very heavy, and they did not know what to answer him. And he came the third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See? My, my betrayer is at hand. Straight up. And immediately while Jesus was still speaking, Judas came, one of the twelve, and with him a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Seize him and lead him away under guard. And when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and he kissed them. And they laid hands on him and seized him. But one of those who stood by drew his sword 
and struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. And Jesus said to them, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to capture me? You know, why are y'all coming out here like this? I, I, I didn't go nowhere. I'm still the same guy I was. I, didn't, I was harmless then. And you all coming out like I'm, I'm the big bad wolf. Day after day, I was with you in the temple teaching. He's telling them straight up. And you did not seize me, but let the scriptures be fulfilled. And they all left him and fled. They, his disciples didn't want to hear that. They scattered like roaches. I'm just saying. And the young man followed him with nothing but a linen cloth about his body. And they seized him, but he left the linen cloth and ran away naked. That's how this, this young man was ready to get away. He, was, he ran away naked. He followed him. He was you know, to get the scoop and see what was going on and, you know, but he could not, he couldn't hang. He, he ran. He don't, he don't want any parts of that. And they led Jesus to the high priest and all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes came together. See how you know, all the enemies will gather? The chief priests and the elders and the scribes came together. And Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest. And he was sitting with the guards and warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were seeking testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. See? They couldn't find any. For many bore false witnesses <coughs> against him, but their testimony did not agree. And some stood up and bore false witness against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another, not made with hands. Yet even about their tes about this, their testimony did not agree. And the high priest stood up in the midst and asked Jesus, Have you no answer to make? What is it that these men testify against you? But he remained silent and made no answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Christ? You know, bruh, are you the Christ? The son of, of the blessed? And Jesus said, I am, and you will see the son of man seated at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven. And the high priest tore his garment and said, What further witness do we need? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? And they all condemned, condemned him as, a, as deserving death. And some began to spit on him and to cover his face and to strike him, saying to him, Prophesy. And the guards received him with blows. They were beating him up with police brutality before, you know, a lot of people that have suffered at the hands of corruption and corrupt police officers, they're was Jesus, who also suffered at the hands of corrupt uh, police officers. You see that. And as Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servants the girls of the high priest came and seeing Peter warming himself, she looked at him and said, you also were with the Nazarene, Jesus. But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you mean. And he went out into the gateway and the rooster crowed. And the servant girl saw him and began again to see to say to the bystanders, this man is one of them. She was still, she was, wasn't letting that go. But again, he denied it. And after a little while, the bystanders again said to Peter, certainly you are one of them. You are a Galilean. But he began to invoke a curse on himself and to swear. I do not know this man of whom you speak. And immediately the rooster crowed a second time. And Peter remembered how Jesus had said to him before the rooster crow, uh, crows uh, twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. Now the Feast of Unleavened Bread drew near, which is called the Passover. So now it's Luke. this is Luke's um, account. The chief priests and the scribes were seeking how to put him to death, for they feared the people. Then Satan entered in, into Judas, um, called Iscariot, who was um, of the number of the twelve. Satan entered him, this, a demonic spirit, the chief guy. And he, and he went away and conferred with the chief priest and officers how he might betray him to them. So when he literally, when they said the devil made him do it, literally the devil made him do it. And they were glad and agreed to give him money. So he consented and sought an opportunity to betray him to them in the um, absence of a crowd. Then came the day of unleavened bread on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. So Jesus sent Peter and John saying, go and prepare the Passover for us that we might eat it. They said to him, where will you have us prepare it? He said to them, behold, when you have entered the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him in, into the house that he enters 
and tell the master of the house, the teacher says to you, where is the guest from you? I may eat the Passover with my disciples. And he will show you a large upper room furnished, furnished, buried there. And they went and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. And when the hour came, he reclined at table and the apostles with him. And he said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he said, Take this and divide it amongst yourselves. For I tell you that from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. This is what this is about. And likewise, the cup after they had eaten, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is a new covenant in my blood. And behold, the hand of him who betrays me is with me on the table. For the Son of Man goes as it has been determined. But woe to that man by whom he is betrayed. And they began to question one another, which of them could it be who have who was going to do this? A dispute also arose among them as to which of them was to be regarded as the greatest. And he said to them, the kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them. And those in authority over them are called benefactors. But not so with you. Rather, let the greatest among you become as the youngest, and the leader as one of one who deserves. For who is greater, one who reclines at a table or one who serves? Is it not one, the one who reclines at the table? But I am among you as the one who serves. You are those who have stayed with me in my trials, and I assign to you, as my father assigned to me, a kingdom, that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom. And sit on the thrones, judging by the twelve tribes of Israel. They will be judging. That's what the disciples will be doing. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan demanded to have you, that he might sift you like wheat. But I have, be, I, have, I have prayed for you, that your faith may not fail. My God, please pray that my faith does not fail. And when you have turned again, strengthen your brothers. Peter said to him, Lord, I am ready to go with you, both to prison and to death. Jesus said, I tell you, Peter, the rooster will not crow this day until you deny it three times that you know me. And he said to them, when I sent you out with no money bag or knapsack or sandals, did you lack anything? They said nothing. Hey, nothing. And he said to them, but now let the one who has a money bag take it and likewise a knapsack and let the one who has no sword sell his cloak and buy one. For I tell you that this scripture must be fulfilled in me. And he was num numbered with the transgressors for what is written about me has is for me fulfillment. And they said, look, Lord, here are two swords. And he said to them, it is enough. And he came out and went as the, was his custom to the Mount of Olives and the disciples followed him. And when he came to the, the place, he said to them, pray that you may not enter into temptation. And he withdrew from them about a stone's throw and knelt down and prayed saying, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. And there appeared to him an angel from heaven, strengthening him. And be, being in, in agony, he pray, um, prayed more earnestly. And his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. And when he rose from the prayer, um, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping for sorrow. And he said to them, why are you sleeping? Rise and pray that you may not enter into temptation. While he was still speaking, the, there came a crowd, and the man called Judas, one of the twelve, was leaving them. He drew them near to Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus said to him, Judas, would you betray the Son of Man with a kiss? Straight up, Jesus just knows. You can't play Jesus. And when those who were around him saw that he would follow, they said, Lord, shall we strike with the sword? And one of them struck the servant of the high priest, and cut off his, ear, off his ear. But Jesus said, no more of this. And he touched his ear and healed him. You can, um, then Jesus said to the high chief priests and officers of the temple and elders who had come out against him, have you come out as a, against a robber with swords and clubs? When I was with you day after day in the temple, you did not lay hands on me. But this is your, your hour and the power of darkness. 
This is when you shine. This is your hour right now. Then they seized him and led him away, bringing him into the high priest's house. And Peter was following at a distance. And when they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down, Peter sat down among them. Trying to get the scoop. There, I'm sorry. Then a servant, seeing him at, as he sat in the light and looking closely at him, said, This man also was with him. But he denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. And a little later, someone call, else called him, well, I, well, somebody else saw him, excuse me, and said, you are also one of them. They know They know him for sure. His, his face was recognizable. He had been with this man. He was in close proximity. He was one of the, the people that he actually was closest to, so it seems, in the scriptures. He says, but Peter said, man, I am not. And after an interval of about an, half an hour, was still another, still another insisted, saying, Certainly this man also was with him, for he too is Galilean. But Peter said, Man, I do not know what you are talking about. And immediately the, while he was speaking, the rooster crowed. And the Lord turned and looked at Peter. And the Lord turned and looked at Peter. And Peter remembered the saying of the Lord. Now he had said to him, Before the rooster crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. Now the men who were holding Jesus in custody were mocking him as they beat him. They also blindfolded him and kept asking him, prophesy, who is it that struck you? And they said many other things against him, blaspheming him. When, the, when they came, the assembly, or, I'm sorry, the assembly of the elders of the people gathered together, both chief priests and scribes, and they led him away to their council. And they said, if you are the Christ, tell us. But he said to them, if I tell you, you will not believe. And if I ask you, you will not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man shall be seated at the right hand of the Father. No, basically, that, that's where he's going to be sitting. I mean, they said the, the right hand of the power of God. That's the right hand of the Father. So they all said, are you the Son of God then? You, and he said to them, you say that I am. Then they said, what further testimony do we need? We have heard it ourselves from his own lips. Straight up. John 13, our final chapter. Those were the synoptic gospel. John tells from the a different perspective altogether. He shows Jesus' deity. Now, before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come to the, um, depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. During supper, when the devil had already put it into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going back to God, rose from supper. He laid hands he laid out aside his outer garments and taking a towel, he tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with a towel that was wrapped around him. He began to, um, or he came to Simon Peter and who said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? Jesus answered him, what am I um, doing? You do not understand now, but afterward you will understand. Peter said to him, you will you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, if I do not wash you, you have no share with me. He's going to wash us white as snow. Peter had to let him. He had to see. You know, <laughs> time Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my hair. You wash it all then. Jesus said to him, the one who has bathed does not need to wash except for his feet. But it, 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 um, but it is completely clean and you are clean, but not every one of you. For he knew who was to betray him. That was why he said, not all of you are clean. Jesus knew. When he had washed their feet and put on his outer garments and resumed his place, he said to them, Do you understand what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you also should do just as I have done to you. Truly, truly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. I'm not speaking of all of you. I know whom I have chosen. The scripture will be fulfilled. He who ate my bread has lifted his heel against me. I'm telling you this now before it takes place. He's telling them before it takes place. That when it does take place, you may believe that I am he. Truly, I say to you, truly, truly, whoever receives the one I send, or the one I send, receives me. 
And whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. Straight up. After paying these things, or I'm saying them, <laughs> Jesus was troubled in his spirit and testified, Truly, truly, I say to you, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another, uncertain of whom he spoke. One of his disciples, whom Jesus loved, was reclining at, at table at Jesus' side. So Simon Peter motioned to him, asked Jesus of whom he was speaking. So that disciple, leaning back against Jesus, said to him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, It is he who I will give this morsel of bread when I have dipped it. So when he had dipped the morsel, he gave it to Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot. Then after he had taken the morsel, Satan entered to him. Jesus said to him, What are you going to do? Do quickly. What you are going to do, do quickly. Whatever you're going to do, do it quick. No one at the table knew why he said this to him. Some thought that because Judas had the money bag, Jesus was telling him but what we need for the feast or that he should you know, to basically tell them, buy what you need at the feast. That's what he's telling them to look, in case that's what's going on. Jesus, and then, or that he should give something to the poor. So after receiving the morsel of bread, he immediately went out and it was night. That's what happened. When he had gone out, Jesus said, now is the son of man glorified and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and glorify him at once. Little children, yet a little while I am with you. You will seek me, and just as I said to the Jews, so now I also say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. A new commandment I give to you, that, one, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You also are to love one another. Straight up. Um, but this, or by this, all people will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. We have to have love for one another, for everybody. We have to have it. That's how he know, people will know that we're his disciples. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, where are you going? Jesus answered him, where I am going, you cannot follow me now, but you will follow afterward. Peter said to him, Lord, why can I not follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Jesus answered, will you lay down your life for me? Truly, truly, I say to you, the rooster will not grow till you have denied me three times. Wow, we get so excited about Jesus, but when the rubber meets the road, are we willing to, to stick by him? Will we scatter? Or will we will be caught up in our humanity and we are and so that we forget about him? Let us, you know, not forget about him. Let us learn the left the lessons of the disciples. Let us do that. I ask you to pray this prayer of repentance if you have any hesitation at all as to whether or not you will stand up with Jesus or to the end, or if you've never even accepted him as your Savior in the first place and you have a desire to do that, please say this prayer with me. Father, it is written in your word that if I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in my heart that you have raised him from the dead, I shall be, sa be saved. Therefore, Father, I confess that Jesus is my Lord. I make him Lord of my life right now. I believe in my heart that you raised Jesus from the dead. I renounce my past life with Satan and close the door to any of his devices. I thank you for, for, for forgiving me of all my sin. Jesus is my Lord, and I am a new creation. Old things have passed away. Now all things become new. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. If you have said this prayer with me, and it's your first time, and you have a church home, please put your name in, um, in the chat, and we will rejoice with you. If you have said this prayer with me, and you do not have a church home in your area, please say this prayer with me um, once again, you know, or... or or think about it once again. Please make sure that you're sure that you're sure that Jesus is who you want. And then do me a favor. If, uh, put your name and your city and your state. If you decided that Jesus is who you want to be serving. And we'll rejoice with you, I promise. Put your city. And, and we will direct you also, if you put your city and state in the chat, to a church home that will love on you. And make sure that you are cultivated. Your gifts are cultivated so that you can serve him in the manner in which you were created. And for that purpose, finally, like and share this page and subscribe to our channel. It will be great. We would love to have your subscribers. Remember, it's about time.